What is good guys, we are here with SPL week 2, this is the first match of week 2, we have Poek from the Cryos versus P2 from the Tigers, and yeah, um, Poek has like a bulky build, I think he made a team like this that Blunder used to qualify for ult and it had like, um, it had like Dougie over Hippowdon and it had Clef over Weewile I think, so this is either going to be uh, SD Scissor with Defog Mew or Defog Zapdos, yeah I will assume it's SD Sis when he has two other potential defoggers. I think on the original team it was Knock of SD actually. And he also used Knock of SD Sis, I think, in his week one match versus FV. Uh, P2 has a more offensive team with uh, Electric Seed Halucha. Obviously, um, Poik has to switch out here. He needs his Mew healthy for checking the Halucha later on in the game. I assume this Mew is gonna be Will O Wisp Ice Beam to help with the Zygon matchup. I mean, Hippowdon could have Ice Fang for Zygon as well. But I think um, he's actually uh, this. This might also have off power as Mew. He's actually quite weak to Heatran. This could be um. So this could be Ice Beam off power soft bolt. Will always Mew and then Defog could be on Zapdos only. We shall see later in the game. Like I'm not sure yet if it's double Defog or if he only has one Defogger. Um, but I assume that this is either a uh, that is a Z move Kyurem and that the Coco is most likely uh, Shuka or Specs. So I expect either. Uh, the U-turn here, if he has that, or if he doesn't have U-turn, he can double out, uh, he has U-turn. Do we see if it's helmet? It's not helmet. So it's most likely uh, leftovers have powered on. Now, Kyurem can come out here. And if it has HP fire, Kyurem is a huge uh, threat for sure. After um, Kyurem uses up the z it obviously gets um, walled pretty much by stuff like Mew. But before that, Kyurem is a huge threat. Um, when it has the sub zero slammer, because if it has HP fire, like Poik has to scout out if it has HP fire. I don't know if he wants to go hard scissor if the Kyurem comes out. I would assume he would probably go into uh, maybe Toxapex. And I think P2 would probably go for Fusion Bolt here, as it does. If he has um, HP fire, he can go for Fusion Bolt on the incoming scissor or Pex. And then, like, if he has HP fire afterwards, he can. Um, fusion Bolt into HP fire would probably kill the scissor, is what I'm trying to say. Also, yeah, I would almost call his team HO, but then he has a Celestealer at the end. I'm not sure about the Celestealer if it's an offensive one. I think it's it's a bulky Celestealer, actually. And, yeah, this is, these two ones are probably defensive. This is a uh, defensive lander to help him versus... Like, Spadef Stealer would make sense to help him versus Greninja. Lando makes sense to help him versus Zygarde. Yeah, exactly. Fusion Bolt was always the play there, and that is so much. Is that Choice Bandit? There might just be Choice Bandit. Oh, it's an Electric Terrain. Uh, I forgot about the Electric Terrain just because the Sandstorm was over the terrain. That did so much. That is obviously Spadef packs. And yeah, uh, oh my god, I completely forgot the ter about Terrain being up. That means Scissor also cannot switch it on Fusion Bolt. Oof, um, I have to go to Kalk real quick. I mean, they're all saying juicy play, but Poeg was never gonna stay in with his power on there, so I think Fusion Bolt was 100% free. Well, uh, completely free and was a really good play, obviously. Um, we have to calculate real quick if that is just max attack here or if it's uh, Toxapex. I'm gonna put a Spadef Toxapex because that is the most standard. Electric Terrain, Fusion Bolt does. Yeah, I think that's Bandit damage. Why did that do so? Why does that do so little? Oh, because it has Wakanberry. My bad, my bad. It has Wakanberry. Um. So yeah, I assume that's yeah, that's not choice Bennett. It's just electric terrain boosted. So Poi can go for uh, HP fire here if he has it because that covers the incoming scissor and it also hits the. Nah, he Poi wouldn't go we well here. So yeah, P2 can HP fire for sure if he has that. Like Mew, I assume Mew has is uh, some sort of speedy. Like it's somewhat speedy Mew, so Mew also cannot take this well. So he does go another power on. I'm actually surprised by the Fusion Bolt again play. I thought he would either HP Fire or Ice Beam there. Uh, maybe he doesn't have HP Fire, that could obviously be the case. So this could be Fusion Bolt, Roost, uh, Ice Beam and Z Freeze Shock. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that is Z move. Not only from Team Preview, but also from not seeing the Life Orb. If it was Life Orb, it obviously would have killed the, the packs and won with uh, Fusion Bolt into Rain. Also, yeah, obviously Pax has to be Spadef on his team looking at preview. I mean, it was obvious from the damage, but also you could tell from team preview. Because his uh, Ash couldn't just check is otherwise not really existent. Yeah, like, he would just get destroyed by Gran. 
Uh, Protein Greninja is still a huge problem to Poke's team if it has the correct coverage, but that is not really that common at the moment. So he does switch out into Landers. What do you expect there? Oh, I think he expected maybe... I was gonna say maybe the Scizor, but I'm actually not sure. Um, yeah, if it's defensive land, though, P2 has to switch out here. There's a chance that this is Scarf. Uh, earlier I said it would... Now, the reason why I think this has to be defensive is because this is his only potential rocker. Uh, it could obviously be Scarf rocks, but... It just seems like um, defensive lander would make more sense on his team. Like, defensive lander is like splashable, it checks a lot of the meta. Mimic Q Zygarde. I don't know why staying in was ever the play there. Uh, I thought... I mean, he probably predicted the Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised. Why did he... um? I must have missed something. I don't know why he switched out his Kyurem earlier on the on the Hippowdon. Unless he is, unless he really is Choice Bandit, and I did and I did my calc wrong. Let me see Kyurem. No, that is not Bandit. If it's unless it's Fidelf packs, but it has to be Fidelf packs. Now. I think Polk has to go Scizor here, right? Because, obviously... Mew would die to a Sub-Zero Slammer. I assume that this Kyurem has uh, max speed, which means it outspeeds the Mew. I mean, Mew is not gonna run max speed, obviously. It runs a good amount of speed. You could see it outsped the Lando. I mean, defensive Lando... Um, so, like, it's confirmed defensive Lando from the... He was able to lift the Ice Beam. Pro definitely had HP investment, I would assume. So it's probably rocks. Uh, wait, is it rocks and defog Lando? No, I think it's actually potentially defog Coco and then rocks on Lando because rocks and defog on one mon. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, the mon would get worn down a lot if you have to like if it has to control the hazards and set the hazards. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that oh the Mew is faster. Wow. So maybe maybe Poix Mew is max speed actually. That's crazy. So now. Um, this Kyurem is not a threat anymore. <laughs> I thought Kyurem would like completely destroy Poik. But I think he's running max speed Mew actually, that's crazy. Um, I can run a Calc real quick from the U-turn damage that uh, Landris did to the Mew, it did 35%. So we can Calc uh, defensive Lando versus max speed Mew and then we can see uh, if the Mew had any bulk investment. Because then we will know if the Kyurem is max speed. Obviously now he can just softball here. Um, P2 is probably forced to switch out here. Damn, that was huge. But it actually makes a lot of sense um, to have max speed Mew because HP Fire Kyurem would actually otherwise destroy his team. But yeah, let me run this Kalk real quick. So Yuta would have done uh, 29 to 35. And let's say if the Mew has no bulk investment, it would have done uh, 34. So we don't know yet because it might have been a roll. The Yuta did 35. So if the Mew is max speed, he just might have just gotten a low roll. Um, like, the reason why I'm trying to find this out is because I want to know if the Kyurem is plus speed or plus attack nature. Kyurem should always be plus speed, in my opinion. Um, so he's just going to U-turn again here with the Coco. Uh, he always has to U-turn when the Hippowdon is in the back. He cannot just go for electric move and let the Hippowdon come in for free. Now he goes land, we get some leftovers here, I assume, yep. And if he has Toxic on Landris, that would be really cool here for P2. He does just get up his rocks, but Poi can always just defog. This is just a leftover Lando, so it's not gonna be able to do anything to the Zapdos. Obviously, it doesn't have like Continental Crush, and if it had Edge, that's completely fine. So he's just gonna defog here. As I think Poik just wins this game. Like I honestly don't see how P2 can win. Now he's forced to U-turn again. Uh, if Z Wild Charge doesn't all cope, Poik might even be able to stay in here and go for Roost. But I think just going to Hippowdon is the play again, because Yuten does that little damage to Hippowdon that it doesn't even matter. Um, the only thing that, that is a problem here is... Oh, he does T-Build, wow. And he's... he's oh, he's Yuten T-Build, so he's... Mixed Coco. Um, 
Yeah, I assume this has to be Defog Coco because, like I said, the Landers should not have Defog and Rocks. The Landers should be. Um, I mean, I see what P2 is doing. He's uh, bringing his Lando in and trying to get more leftovers to get this back healthy. Um, but he's not really gaining much from doing this. Rocks are never gonna go up. Uh, Defog has more PP because of the pressure ability from Zapdos. I mean, and technically Defog has less, but pressure from Zapdos makes it so he has more Defogs. And he can just always go Hippo. The only thing that P2 could bring in on Hippo would be the Medicham, but... Like, since the Mew is not at full, the Medicham might be able to tweet KO that. But also if the... Um, yeah, yeah, if the Mew is max speed, we don't know that yet because, like I said, it might have been a, just a low roll from U-turn. If the Mew is max speed, it cannot switch into Medicham at all. It will take, like, I think half from High Jump King, maybe 45, but it will take a lot. And Hippowdon would probably get to it KO'd from... Um, I assume he's gonna U-turn here. Yeah, Hippowdon would probably to it KO'd from High Jump Kick. We're gonna calc that real quick. I assume this is a Fizz Def. It might be mixed. We're gonna count mixed defensive. Uh, high Jump Kick does... Yeah, to it KO's for sure. So yeah, he keeps bringing in his Landris. I assume he's just gonna rock again to force the Zapdos to defog. Um, because that way he's just getting some leftovers and if his Landos is getting back healthy. But in the long run... Like, Pog is in complete control of this match. Ever since the Kyurem was burned... That was that was really clutch that the Mew was faster. Yeah, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking that it's max speed Mew. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure he does grass not predicting the Hippowdon, which was actually a clutch. Oof. That was a really cool play by P2 and I did not see that one coming. But like I said earlier, P um, Poi can technically also just stay in with Zapdos if um, Coco can't go and go for Roost. So he does go in his Steeler. Um, he's got to protect here. The reason why he went Steeler is he did not have a switch in at all to the Zapdos. And he just won and did electric terrain run out, which means Coco cannot do any damage to the Zapdos. Also, did Coco switch up moves earlier? Now he's gonna lead sheet. Um, he seems to be somewhat of a Spadef Celeste dealer, which makes sense. Like I said earlier, it helps him with the Greninja matchup. Um, I don't remember if Coco switched up moves ever. I don't think it did. So it might be choice Coco actually. What? That's wild. A nice play by P2 there. But the thing is, Toxapex can just switch out here and get Regenerator back. And a Pex that was almost dead um, from the Fusion Bolt and Electric Terrain is now going to be back to full soon. Uh, so yeah, Medicham comes out here. Medicham can go for Ice Punch. I don't think P2 would go hard into Weavile and risk it. Weavile is pretty much one of the ones he can go out after to force the Medicham out. And Weavile pretty much just clicks... Uh, Icicle Crash and claims the kill as long as it connects because I think the Steela is, like I said, more speed and it's already weakened so it will definitely get 2 killed from Crash. And the reason why I say Crash over Knockoff is because Crash destroys everything. Knockoff would let Coco potentially come out. Or oh, I would also let Halucha come out, but that would mean Halucha would lose its um, thing. Its seed. Okay, let's go for the para here. He's willing to sack his Zapdos. Um, Hmm, surprised by that. Like I think he might have um he might have double defog. If he like if he if he sacked the Zapdos dead and um for sure he would have had double defog. Like he had pressure. If he had static, um I would have actually under like he could have gone for Roost there if he had static to fish for the for the power. But just getting oh I understand what he's doing here. Just getting damage off on manage him. Um it makes sense because when Weevil comes out, as he goes for Skull here, uh, P2 over predicts, trying to predict his pivot. But it doesn't matter too much. And now he can go, if he's banned, he can go for Pursuit. And I think it will kill even if the Medicham stays in. So that's why, yeah, that makes a lot of sense now why he um, discharged first and then uh, switched out. So he wasn't trying to sack his Zapdos. He was just sacking the Pex. Yeah, Pex isn't needed this game. Like, Pex is nice for... Yeah, that's definitely Choice Bandit, I would assume. We don't see Life Orb. 
there could still be a slight chance that it's uh, Z move we will, but we're gonna run the calc real quick. Well versus uh, Medicham. Yeah, if it's if it's not banned, that would have been a roll. So I assume it's banned because I don't think Poik would risk a roll. So P2 can go into his Coco here. Yeah, but honestly, I just don't see how how P2 can win. Um, like Kyurem and Medijim were like his two breakers. After Kyurem was burned, his team is already kind of kept in check. Um, the 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 grass knot would have been a nice tech for the Hippodon, but Poik going for the roost. I think he anticipated either a T bolt or a U turn. I I actually I'm not sure if he um scouted for grass knot, but if the roost player was scouting for grass knot, he's an absolute genius. So he goes Lando, um, knowing that this is most likely choice bandit. But yeah, like he's getting health back on Landers, but it doesn't. Actually, if HP yeah, if HBI kills the Zapdos, then Poik is not gonna risk the Zapdos here. So I assume. He does have Defog on the Scissor as well, potentially. Or on the Mew. At least one of the two. Yeah, I think no, I think this should be SD as a win condition. And the Defog um, might be on Mew as well. Double Defog makes sense on a bulky team like this. You have two months, three to rocks. I mean, one of the ones weak to rocks has hazard control. But it's like a fat team that would get annoyed by Spike. So, like, double Defog definitely would make sense to me. Yeah. And you also have packs to deal with opposing T Spikes, obviously. But Spikes could definitely, could definitely be annoying. Um, yeah, like po P2 can go for this sheet here. Uh, if Poik has U-turn, he can go for that because he had sp obviously had speed. And yeah, P2 is pretty much trying to not let the Zapdos heal, uh, which is why yeah, which is why he goes for flamethrower lead sheet. I, I think that might have killed the Zapdos. I'm actually not sure. Now Poik can go for his rocks here. Uh, I can see P2 spamming flamethrower. Or actually no no the send is up, the send is up. I was gonna say he cannot I was gonna say he cannot go Zapdos because the sand is up. Exactly, exactly. The reason why he spammed flamethrower I was gonna say is to catch this incoming Zapdos, right? And but I didn't think Pure Poik would actually risk the Zapdos that turn. Um Zapdos obviously earlier I said he needs the Mew healthy for the Halucha, but he also had Zapdos for the Halucha, I didn't talk about that. But yeah, Zapdos is now gone. Mew is Mew is a little bit weakened. So like if it's really max speed Mew and he got a low roll with U-turn from the Lando. Yeah, that means it's max speed Mew. Then Halucha can actually still win the game, so let's not talk too soon. Speak too soon. But the thing is he also has Bullet Punch and Ice Shard. And I assume Hippowden has either Whirlwind or Wait, is Rock Slide, Stealth Rock, Earthquake, and Slack Off, so it probably doesn't have Wolverine, never mind. Yeah, it's Rock Slide, Hippowden for for his Pinsa matchup, but he already has a Zapdos. Not 100% not sure what Rock Slide is for. So, Poi can go like for Mega Evolve and Knock Off here if he has that. Exactly, he used that last week and it just makes a lot of sense because also I talked about it earlier Blender used a team like this to qualify for OT and it was also SD knockoff scissor I think bullet punch and Bruce are other moves yep. Um, what is P2 gonna go here? Um, either Coco or Celestila mm -hmm. Obviously Poik doesn't want to stay in here He's either gonna go Mew or Hippowdon The good thing for P2 about being parrot is he can potentially flamethrower burn the Mew without getting synchronized burned. Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm talking about. If he fishes for the burn here, um, that would cancel out the Mew's leftovers and that would potentially help Halucha win the game. But we obviously went into Mew because he wants it. Also, he cannot get will o -Wisp by a Mew by being paralyzed. Um, so the parrot is not too bad for him. Yeah, he obviously want, went into Mew to heal this up for checking Halucha, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but you cannot really touch the Celestila, and also if Celestila gets paralyzed, it doesn't use up any PP while Leech Shield heals the Celestila back up. So exactly, I think Poik doesn't has like no way of um, beating the Steeler with the Muse. He has to switch. Obviously, there's the chance to get a burn here. Uh, yeah, I did talk as if the game was over, but I can see a slight chance that the Halucha can win this. 
If Alucha dodges a will o from the Mew, it can definitely win. Maybe. Depends on... Like, it gets a defense boost. I don't know if it if it can live Ice Shot into Bullet Punch. If I, I have to calc that, yeah. So he's gonna flamethrow us them here, I see. I'm just trying to get a burn, either the Hippowdon or the Mew. And yeah, I think Poig is like kind of PP stalling this. He's gonna um, heal up his Mew, then he's gonna go back to Hippowdon. The Para is nice for Poig because his Mew um, is still at full. He didn't get leech seated. I'm surprised he didn't go back to Hippowdon there. Because he wants this Mew as a healthy amount, I would assume, for the Halucha. In case, like, in case Bullet Punch into Ice Shot does not kill Halucha. Uh, having Mew healthy would, is pretty important, I think. So Grass Knot actually does a good amount from from Coco to to a hip hard on. Um, wait, I have to calculate the Grass Knot damage from earlier because there might be Specs damage. Because if it's Specs, this is actually a huge uh, threat. Then if the Specs Grass Knot will probably do a lot. The 10% to Zapdos, so just from that I'm gonna run a Kalk real quick, uh, not doubles, uh, Zapdos versus uh, Tapu Koko, let's give it Grass Knot, I mean Specs U-turn would be odd, but there's a slight chance it's dead. Yeah, that would do, that would do more, so it's not Specs probably. So U-turns into Halucha and now he's gonna go um, for game. He's gonna SD up here. I assume this doesn't have Whirlwind because it has to have Earthquake. I'm gonna now run the Kalk. How much Halucha takes from um, Choice Band Ice Shard with a plus one in defense? Poik has to either go into Mew here to uh, threaten it with a Will Wisp or into uh, Wee Well. I assume he's gonna go to Mew. Uh, so Ice Shard does 48 to uh, 58. Sandstorm will also chip the Halucha. So let's say Ice Shard plus Sandstorm would already do like 60-ish. And then Bullet Punch from Scizor is probably gonna... But there's a chance that this also has a Roost. Um, the re that's why he cannot stay in. Yeah. He cannot stay in with the Hippodon because if this has Roost it can get back to full. And then it can be out of range from Bullet Punch plus Ice Shard. Uh, also, obviously... Um, yeah, hard Weevil, exactly. I was gonna say either Mew or Weevil is gonna come out. Um, P2 is gonna have to click Acrobatics here. Ice Shot is gonna do around half, as you can see from the calc. It was like 48 to 58, right? I don't. I think so, yeah. So Acrobatics is gonna kill it, and I think it's a Bullet Punch range after. Unless, unless Poi gets like two low rolls. So Alucha takes one more round of Sandstorm. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, He's definitely in bullet punch range now. The crit obviously didn't matter. But now Scissor comes out and clicks bullet punch. Um, yeah, this was the correct play by Poi actually. Because since Sandstorm was still up, I think it was pretty much in his favor to always kill with Ice Shot into bullet punch. And that way he does not have to risk uh, missing a Will O Wisp from his Mew. Like, obviously, Mew could also go for Ice Beam. But if Alucha had Roost, um, that would potentially be, be potentially be bad. So I completely agree with how Poi played this. So he does get the burn now, finally, but since the Halucha already um, used up its electric seed, Halucha is not a threat anymore. And Mew, is, Mew being burned is not bad at all for Poik, especially with burn being nerfed in Gen 7. So the last threat that P2 has left is Tapu Koko, if played correct. If played correct, Tapu Koko can definitely still put in work, but this doesn't work out for P2, because... I think Poik is always going to off quick here because you don't want to risk... Um, why would he T-Ball there? Okay, so he slacked off. Um, either predicting U-turn or seeing to, see, to see how much Grass Knot does. Um, I'm scrolling to see how much Grass Knot does. He, so he t it. Okay, so he t it predicting the Scizor, right? I'm surprised Poik didn't off quick there though. Because Grass Knot from Coco that is not specs doesn't do that much, I would assume. I would I assume it is like 60 maybe, so his opponent is still healthy enough to easily heal up on the Celesteela or on the Landorus, I would assume. So I'd have to calc to make sure. 
Um, I'm just gonna like like assume that this is magnet cocoa. I'm not sure. Uh, let me say grass. No, like the item doesn't matter that I put in. I assume it's not. Yeah, just 57 to 67 if it's mixed hippo. With leftovers, he would have still been at like. He would have still been at like m mid 30% at least, or even 40%. So I think he could have earthquake there. Um, yeah, I still don't remember if the um, if the Coco has ever changed that moves. It might actually be Choice Guard Tapu Coco if it never changed that moves. So earlier he went um, for T Bolt. Yeah, yeah, he always switched out. He always switched out after he went for T Bolt. He did not U turn under the power, so I think that the Coco is Choice actually. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's Specs because the Grasno did like nothing to Zap. Just like I ran the Kalk. Obviously, P2 can go for a leech sheet here. If he doesn't get, unless he gets a uh, power flinch down, <laughs> so he goes in the mew predicting a protect. I would guess, yeah. But yeah, Salas being proud actually helps P2 a lot. Wow. I mean, this this game is just gonna take a long time, but I think Poik has this. Salas is eventually gonna run out of leech seeds. He can switch between Mew and her power on to like waste leech seed and unless he gets no nah, I mean even if he gets a flamethrower burn on her power on I think um, Mew and Tippo can easily stall out the Celestealer. This is pretty much a non threat at all without uh, its unburden. And the low health that's at means it's at it's at five percent after rocks. Uh, Coco is, I assume, choice guard at this point. I'm not 100% sure on that. It would make sense to have a secondary speed control besides fake out manage him and unburden Lucha. Um, and yeah, I still think the cure. Obviously, oh, it revealed its Z move. I was gonna say I think it's Z move, but it does. It did reveal its Z move earlier. Yeah, I mean, this is not gonna be the, the most interesting end game now. It's just gonna be Poik. Switching between Mew um, and Hippowdon and going for a healing move every few turns. I think P2 eventually has to switch out. He has Earthquake, which is actually really cool. That's for Magnet Zone and for Heatran, obviously. Oof. Yeah, if the, the Cure Mod's bet if the Cure Mod's faster than the Mew. This game would have been uh, definitely could have gone that would have been way more in P2's favor, I think. And also, Poik went for that really com pretty confident, so I think uh, Poik is definitely max speed Mew or at least speed keeps Curum. But if you speed keep Curum, you have to run so much speed at that point you can already go max speed. Like I don't think there's a um, there's like only a few EVs that you could be able to, would be able to put in defense at that point if you keep. Creep Curum, so you might as well go Max Max. But then you have the chance to outspeed Mega Medicham and Will O Wisp at first. Because um, if you max speed, you cannot switch into Medicham well. But if you have the chance to outspeed it, it could be really helpful. So, yeah, as I um, already said, he's gonna switch between Mew and Hippowd on here. <laughs> then it's gonna take a while to upload with my bad net. It's fine. I mean, it's like. Um, it's like small things like like you things that you don't see at team preview like speedy mew for Kyurem like those little tags um that's when you know like people are like really prepped like they know what they're doing right like I just I just like seeing those things because when I saw team preview I thought oh this Kyurem is gonna destroy him but then he had the speedy mew if P2 has adamant Curum and the Mew would not have outsped it if it was Jolly. Then it was just then it's, it's then it's, then that's just bad on P2. But I assume he is Jolly, uh, not Jolly, but plus speed nature Curum. Doesn't have to be Jolly. Jolly can actually be good on Curum though because you don't lower any of your um, death and speed death, and you can check you can uh, check stuff better because Curum actually doesn't have a bad defensive typing. Like you can check like Coco's T builds uh, if you don't have minus speed def. If you don't have minus defense, you can take um, like Scissors Bullet Punch potentially in HP Fire. It, it's just an example, right? 
So he's just gonna spam rocks here, and the para actually helps P2 in the sense that he does not use a PP the turn he gets paralyzed. So really helpful for him because when if Poik uses it uses up rocks when he gets parried, he can uh, save PP. But I still think Poik is in a better position overall. Mm -hmm. Obviously he's still fishing for the burn here, which would be nice for P2 to cancel out the leftovers. Um, if P2, if Peter gets paralyzed a lot, I think he can actually win this game if he gets paralyzed a lot. But overall, it's in it's in Poik's favor, yeah. Like Kyurm and Lucha and Lando, pretty much are all non-threats, and they're all uh, pretty low to have. That's I mean, Kyurm is at is at half ish. We can see now if the Kyurm has Roost, that will um, be really nice for, for P2. Because the Mew obviously cannot do much back. Um, Mew being seeded actually means if Kyurm has Ice Beam, Mew is eventually forced out as well. So I think that... Um, Poik might have to eventually switch out into his scissor here if the Kyurm has Roost, but it doesn't have Roost, it seems. He didn't go for Roost at least. Which I'm really surprised by because now he dies to Ice Beam and he also dies to Rock so he can't switch out. Yeah, I'm thinking the Coco has to be Defog, right? Because unless you rely on the opponent to Defog for you, but I don't think that's that great, especially when you don't have Spikes. So I would think that this is... a. Uh, the T bolt U turn and grass not not HBI is the last slot, the last slot defog. I mean I think it has to be. Unless it's rocks and defog Lando, which would be weird to me. Because like I said earlier, if Lando has to set the hazards and remove the hazards, I think that's too much pressure on one mon and would get overwhelmed and worn down super fast. Um but you could see P2 brought like a like a fatter semi stall type of or balanced type of team in the first week was my man BTB and now he brought Something more offensive trying to... Um, I mean, obviously, people always build for the specific opponent that play, usually, in, in, in like, tours. But I think he also was, like, trying to, like, catch his opponent off guard. Um, Yeah, I think this is a rematch, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned this yet. Last year, I'm pretty sure I recorded that as well. Poig was P2, and I think Poig completely destroyed him last year. But yeah, if the, if the Kyurem had Roost, that would have been super nice for P2. Um, helping him to stall out PP from... Uh, Poik's team um, from Mew and forcing Scissor and forcing Scissor to Roost. So like this, this game is not over yet, but I th I think like Poik has like slightly the edge. Now, obviously, if he predicts correctly between T Bolt and Grass, now this is going to be scary for Poik. This is actually he does U turn. If he Grass not there, that would have put him in a really good position. Um, Oh, Mew is super low. So, like, he was able to get rid of the Kyurem, but his Mew is super low. Um, Mew cannot come in here because it would die to rocks plus flamethrower, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, like, this is actually... Ooh, this is actually not bad for P2. Doesn't he win now? Because Hippowdon... Hippowdon is gonna have to spam rocks... And it's eventually gonna run out of slack offs when it gets um, lead sheeted by the Celis dealer and attacked by Celis dealer. It will get worn down, so it has to slack off again. And he does not have a switch in at anymore then when he has to switch out when he runs out of slack offs because Mew would die. And Scissor obviously doesn't want to come in on flamethrower. He has to be careful because he only has seven flamethrowers left, but P2 can actually win now. Um, so maybe uh, sacking the Kyurem then was the play to get the Mew low. Wait, I'm surprised that. But Poik didn't heal his Mew. Wait, wait, which turn was it? Yeah, I think maybe Poik should have gone for softball with his Mew on the Kyurem. Am I missing something? Like, I think he should have kept his Mew healthy. Um, unless he was low on softballs, but I don't think he was that low. I 
I mean, yeah, the Stellar Stealer is getting stalled out, but it is paralyzed. So I think this can go... I think this can go either way. Like, I just I just can't decide. At first I thought Poik had the advantage. As um, yeah, if I think about it... I think it can go either way for sure. Like, they're saying the Stealer is gonna get stalled out. Oh, he's saying that. Oh, okay, okay, I, I can understand. Okay, I, there, okay. So let me explain. I see. Okay, okay. I think I got it now. Um, the the way Poik has to heal his Mew is um, he might have to sack something to get the Mew in, which might be that would be the Scizor, I think. Because if he has his Mew in on Celestia and he gets his Mew healthy. Then Mew plus a Pardon might win the game. But P2 can still win with... With Coco if he gets... Um, potentially a prediction correct later in the game, I think. Uh, yeah, but I think he has to like sack the Scissor to get the Mew in. Because his, his, his a Pardon cannot stay in forever here. Obviously, it depends on... If P2 keeps getting paralyzed, if he doesn't get paralyzed, yes, then then the Poik is in a, has a really good advantage. But if this keeps getting paralyzed, and Poik runs out of slack of and rock PP, um, obviously parallel chance is only 25%, but it happens more often than you would assume. Yeah, I mean, now he's not getting parallel anymore, so nice play going into Halucha. Um, that means he doesn't waste any PP on his Celestia that turn, and he gets um, the health that he lost from Rocks back, and he even gets a little bit more health back. <laughs> I mean, is he just gonna go for acrobatics here, I think, right? A Roost. Oh, so he has a Roost, okay. So that's nice. That's another Mon that... Um, that's another one um, that has extra PP because this can come down to a PP stall war. <laughs> I did not expect this game to take that long. Good god. Like, remember early early on the game um, when the cure went for Fusion Ball on the packs? I thought that this game would be. Um, like, that, would, that the cure would get a kill early on. But. There was a turn where. P2 switched out and I didn't completely understand why he switched out. So he's gonna have to bullet punch here. Um, bullet punch might actually be a roll. Uh, P2 doesn't want to risk that and goes hard on the Celestia, which is completely understandable. Now, if Poi goes for knockoff to get rid of the leftovers, that is actually huge to wear on the Celestia. If he got the para there, um, it would have been really bad for P2. Now Pyrrhic can go to Mew and heal his Mew, which is really important. But this is what I'm talk what I talked about earlier. He pretty much had to sack something to get his Mew back in, which was the scissor. Now he's gonna leech it here, obviously, as he gets paralyzed. Um, but Ice Beam obviously won't do any damage with the Celestia that has a Spadef to a Celestia with a Spadef boost. Yeah, like I just don't know about the. Like, I just feel like... I, am I missing something? I just feel like he should have healed his Mew earlier. And then he didn't, then he would not have had to sack the Scizor. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think P2 wins now. But it was a weird game for sure. Yeah, what I was trying to say earlier... Um, he did switch out one to it. So he's gonna lead shit here, obviously. If he, oh, he's gonna get pearl flinch. No, not like this. Oh, he's gonna have to protect soon to try and get some left. Oh, he doesn't have. My bad. He doesn't have left. Or he got knocked off. Yeah. Now he does get the lead sheet off here. And yeah, with the spadef boost, actually, Mew cannot do any damage to Celeste because lead sheet will just recover up the ice beam chip that Mew does easily. Double lead sheet there. I'm um, trying to predict the power on. 
Wait, I was, I'm trying to find the turn where he... I'm trying to find the turn where he switched out the Kyurem because... The crit is helpful for P2 for sure. Uh, last move on the Mew is... Defog or off power? I would assume defog. You want double defog on a team like this. Yeah, we will we will look about the turn that I want gonna talk about. We're gonna look about that at the end of the game because I don't wanna like I wanna just talk about the turns that are happening right now. <laughs> it's gonna lead Sheet here obviously to stay healthy as long as he does not get um flinched down or para down. Para flinched down. This is fine for P2 and yeah, like pretty much. Yeah, going into Halucha earlier to when the Hippard when the Hippardon was lead seated on a turn where Hippardon didn't attack, I think it was. That was that was played really well, yeah. Um Yeah, uh, besides the turn I already talked about, I think earlier where P2 let his Mew switched out his Mew on the Qum without healing it, I think that was a misplay. But yeah, if if you guys are watching and you understand why he made that play, uh, let me know down below. But I think he should have kept his Mew healthy for sure. Because he could he was already burned on his Mew, which means he could not have like he could not even have got he could not have gotten frozen from Ice Beam from Kieran because he was already burned. So like he he didn't have to fear that. He could have just healed his Mew on the Kieran earlier. Then he didn't have to sack his scissor because having scissor alive would have been really important, I think, yeah. Oh yeah, and he also, yeah, exactly. He went into Zapdos once on the Flamethrower. Sh I think he should not have done that. Um, I'm trying to think when he could have healed his Zapdos, though. How did this... Oh, yeah, Zapdos got low because he because he weakened the Medichim. Um, which was completely understandable because he wanted to weaken the Medichim in a range where Pursuit always kills so he doesn't have to play like mind games with like Icicle Crush and have the Medichim switch out. So I understand that, but Zapdos being low played a huge role as well, and then P2 was able to catch it with the flamethrower. So he can just roost up exactly. Uh, this is gonna do no types of damage, and Halucha can just SD up here actually. And Hippolyn cannot touch Halucha at all. And now P2 can go for acrobatics or for roost. I guess roost is the safest play here. But the reason why I say acrobatics is because in case Poik tries to go hard into Mew. Wait, no, no, this is over. This game is over. There's, there's nothing Poik can do at this point, yeah. That does a lot because um, even though he did lose. Oh, yeah, he did predict the Roost down off quick. As P2 is up playing him really hard now. And the yeah, Halucha does have more base speed than Mew, I think. So Halucha does just win now with acrobatic the Hippo and acrobatic the Mew. Yeah, Halucha has 118 base speed. I mean, they obviously don't run max speed, they run a bulk investment to lift movement blast from Cafable. You only need enough speed to outspeed uh, stuff like Garf Greninja. Okay, now I feel really bad for saying Halucha is a non threat. <laughs> because Halucha actually cleaned up the game. No, I think what he had to do is he had to go hard into Mew on the Halucha and threaten it out with a Will-O-Wisp. But, oh yeah, after, I mean, after his Zapdos went down, Halucha is a huge problem. Damn. Yeah, I feel super bad now for saying Halucha is a non-threat. What the fuck? Halucha putting in that work. I mean, maybe he... Since he doesn't have his speed boost from Unburden, uh, if he's a bulky Halucha, maybe he doesn't outspeed max speed Mew. I have to check that real quick. Uh, obviously, Hippolyta is gonna run out of Earthquake soon. Earthquake also doesn't do enough damage, so he has to crit those. So, Roosting is always the play here for P2, yeah. He does get a crit, but he has to get another crit here. Yeah, I think he doesn't have enough speed to outspeed the Mew because otherwise. 
He could have just acrobatics twice. And he does get the crit again. Oh my god. What the fuck? What in the fuck, dude? How did you get two crits in a row? Yeah, his mu is faster. Okay, CC. Okay, so I don't... So I don't... So I was not completely wrong, right? I was not completely wrong. That's why I said Halucha is an unthread. Because after I lose the speed boost, it gets outsped by Mew. But I'm just surprised. I'm just surprised that he didn't just go into Mew. That he let the Halucha set up. Like, am I missing something? Yeah, obviously he had to roost. I mean, he got roost. He got crit twice in a row. What are the odds? What are the odds for that to happen? Like, well, like, Poe did have the fast Mew, which is like, which like brought him in a um, good position earlier versus Kyurem, but P2 actually played this game super fire, I think. Um. Damn, he's getting super mad now, which is understandable. I mean, Landris... He only has one rock slide left on her part, so Landris can just spam Earthquake here. Yeah, th this game is not over yet, but now Poi can win again. Yeah, probably can definitely win now. Um, how many earthquakes? He only has one earthquake and one rock slide. No, I think yeah, I think you just earthquake here, right? Oh, the leftovers were knocked off. Well, that sucks because if you had leftovers, you could have um, gotten more health on this. Oh yeah, you got knocked off by Scissor earlier, I think. I don't remember. Or was it by Weewell? I think it was by Scissor. Yeah, the odds of double crit are like super low. Yeah. That's kind of like the scenario between Flaming Victini and Poik. Where um, Poik needed like 5 water shuriken hits. And he got them all and then was still a roll and he got the crit as well. But um, then there was a reverse hex at least with the cursed body. So it evened out but... Oof, this, this sucks. Like, I completely agree. Like, P2 had to roost and Poik also had to earthquake and had to hope for the double crit. I don't see what... Like, I don't see what else Poik could have done. He had to hope for double crit. And if, if you don't roost there, if you're P2... You, like, you need health on Halucha, right? So, like, then you get outsped and die to Ice Beam Mew. So, he needed health on that for sure. Yeah, like I was gonna, I was gonna type, put it in the calc if max speed Mew outspeeds Halucha after it loses the unburden because Halucha runs bulk, it doesn't run max speed. But they already talked about it, and we no confront. Now, um, Poig is forced to soft bolt. Now he can ice beam here, but I think P2 is gonna, I think P2 is gonna go to Celesteela here, and then he can lead sheet again. But the problem is, okay, then wow, wow, I thought he had to go Stila there. Not that it matters too much, but the problem now is he only has a little leech seeds left with his Celestila. And now he's in a tough position. Oh god. I mean, yeah, if he goes to Coco, it's a 50 50, obviously. Is it? Yeah, it is. So he does go on the top of Coco here, and the grass knot is super obvious here. This is his last switch into rocks. Oh my god. So if P2 gets this play wrong, he just loses um, because of the double crit earlier. Wow. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like kind of done. Like, I don't know. What... Did he? He has the grass not here, right? Oh, X. So now this is from the way it has been played. To this moment point, it's choice to Coco, which means it dies to hazards. 
He keeps it as a fodder, okay, which means that can potentially save him 1 PP. And now he has to get the leech sheet up without getting flinched down. Oh no, no, he cannot get flinched. That was the last that was the last attack. So he is gonna be able to get the leech sheet up. If he has any left. Oh he doesn't have any left. Wow. I didn't see I didn't see that, my bad. So P2 can't win then. Wow, that's crazy. Because he doesn't have leftovers and he doesn't have leech sheet, which means he cannot beat the Mew. The Ice Beam Mew just wins. That's super this damn, that sucks so much. Like, how do you get like two crits? Like nothing against Poik, but like wow. Like he had he had to go for it. Like right, that was his correct play. He had to go for double crit. So like you cannot say like you cannot say anything against Poik. He went for his win con and he got it. Yeah. That's crazy. I thought he still had lead sheet left and he still had a slight chance, but he doesn't have. I guess when I was in the calculator earlier, he wasted more lead sheets than I could than I thought he would have. Damn, if he grass not there. He, yeah, I think if he grabbed not there, he, he might have had it, yeah. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, he T-bolted predicting the Mew to stay and go for softball, I assume. Or for Ice Beam, one of the two. Because Grass not, uh, would not kill the Mew, most likely, since it's probably pretty weak versus the Mew. Yeah, if, if a Celeste does have left over, this game would have been over, but it doesn't have, obviously. Um, Scizor, um... Scissor did what it had to do, knocking off Celesteela. And he still has 5 slack offs left, so this is completely fine for Poik. And uh, Celesteela is gonna run out of Earthquake now, it only has Protects left. And Poik does win the game for the Cryos, so the Cryos are gonna be up 1 and o versus the Tigers in SPL Week 2. And you guys can expect uh, more SPL Week 1. I got some nice games in the back for that. Yeah, this is this is a sad. Like I wasn't necessarily rooting for P2. Like I like both players, um, so like I was fine with either player winning. But losing to a double crit sucks a lot. Like I was already talking. Um, Halucha is a non-thread because like. After it loses its unburden, right? Mew out speed and stuff. But he actually played this so well. He came back. And. Like, after Q uh, Q was burned, Halucha lost his unburden and Medicham was dead. I thought he couldn't win. But then he came back pretty well. I mean, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think P2 definitely deserved this one. Um, now his Coco dies to rocks and the game is over, and it's a sad ending. Obviously the crits happened a few minutes ago, so like this, they already happened, but like oof. Okay, so what I did not understand, let me pause real quick one second. Okay, so like we have this here, right? And he fusion bolts and the packs almost dies and then he goes to power on, right? And then P2 switches out. Um, which means he probably doesn't have HP fire and he expected the scissor to come out, which is why he went into Landris. But I thought electric terrain fusion bolt would do a lot to the scissor. Um, so that that's that is where I am thrown off guard. And yeah, besides oh yeah, this play was also um, yeah, I think he predicted the will with there, I guess, yeah. That was a bit shaky, but other than he played pr super well. And yeah, this was the turn where I thought, oof, Poig is already in a really good position early on. When he had the fast Mew. I never revealed the last move, but I assume it's Defog. I don't think it revealed it, right? Um, wow. Yeah, I have to cut real quick because I think... I thought that Terrain, the Fusion Bolt Kieran would do a lot. At here, where he switched out, he could have Fusion Bolted again, predicting. If you predicted Scizor to come out or Mew to come out, one second. Okay, I got it now. Um, so the terrain would end next turn. He has two turns of terrain left. Fusion Bolt and terrain would do a, f a lot to Scizor, but it probably will not KO after Scizor Mega Evolves. 
Um, I want to run the calc real quick. Scissor. Let's say he's a bulky scissor, right? Um, bulky SD versus Kiram. That does so much in electric terrain. Okay, it doesn't do enough though. It does 46 to 55. And then when the scissor mega evolves, I mean, I assume he's like something along those lines, some, like in the defense investment. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. And that's before he mega evolves. And then the terrain ends and he can take two, okay. Does make does make a lot of sense to me now. Okay, my bad, I messed that up. But obviously the turns uh, where he got crit with Lucha earlier sucked a lot. Damn, well, that was a wild one, and the hex sucked a lot. Yeah, expert, expert analysis. Feel free to give expert analysis in the comments if any of the players are watching, or if anyone knows like. I obviously um, figured out now that uh, why well, didn't fusion bolt twice, and I also like I also just had, I mean I was just hoping as a spectator that is that is oh my bad I just hit my mic I was hoping as a spectator that the curum would have a uh, hidden power fire to hit the scissor, but that was not the case. That obviously also played a role how he, um, that obviously also played a role how he played his um, his curum. If he had HP fire. But in a different story as well, and he didn't have to switch out um, at turn, I think, 4 it was. So that was uh, actually well pivoted by Poeg into Hippo and the Fusion Bolt again, but it was risky for sure. So uh, the only thing that I want to see now is how did Poeg's... Oh yeah, yeah, Poeg's uh, Zapdos got low. Poeg's Zapdos got low because he was... Um, he was um, weakening the Medicham into Pursuit Range from the Wee While. And I think... What he should have done with his Zapdos is he should have uh, maybe I'm trying to see I'm trying to see maybe he should have sacked something like the Wee While and then gone the Zapdos and roosted up because if he had a healthy Zapdos that helps him versus Halucha um, versus Lando and versus Celestila so it helps versus three out of the five months that P2 has left. It can also put, um, potentially lift T bolt from Coco, and I mean Kiram's ice beam also wouldn't do that much. Because, yeah, like he had that. I think that was a slight misplay from Poik. doubling into Zapdos, um, predicting um, P2 to switch out to Celestia. But yeah, uh, I definitely had some errors in this, but I hope it was overall a fine narration and you guys all enjoyed. Oof, it's almost midnight now. This <laughs> the game was scheduled for like um, I think two hours ago, and then they started like. 50 minutes later or something and then the game took super long so yeah, this is gonna take uh probably almost two hours to upload with my shit net maybe even 2.5 hours but i hope you guys had a fun time expect um more spl week one whenever um like i only have one game in the back i have to re-narrate a lot of the other games so whenever i find time for that i will do that Oof. And that was just such a super long game. I'm pretty sure I missed something and like because I was uh, looking at the calculator in between I wasn't always looking at the gameplay But yeah drop a fat like if you enjoyed And peace out friends. Uh, I can show you guys the standings and the matchups I'm sure you guys already know the matchups as Blunder made a prediction video on his channel But I will show you real quick um, Why is my net lagging? Don't tell me my net is dying. I need you my net. I need gotta upload this um, where are you at? Where are we at? Where are we at? So we got the Tigers versus the Cryos as Poik 1 versus P2. And we can see the other matchups here. Alfemon uh, versus Snow. Um, and yeah, but I'm, but I'm pretty much what I'm hyped for is Flaming Victini versus ABR is gonna be super hype. It's a rematch from Snake Draft. Or like in general, those t they have faced off before. What else? What else am I hyped for? Uh, John vs. Zomok is also a rematch from Snake Draft, also a hype matchup. And yeah, TDK vs. Sidumas is a really good one in my opinion. Uh, which can go either way, but I think I would actually give Sidumas a slight edge. Um, it's kind of just like a gut feeling prediction. But yeah, I'm not here to make prediction, I was just showing you guys my favorite matchups. And yeah, my man BTB vs. Sabella is gonna be cool. And yeah, Bio vs. Latna is also cool. Yeah, I'm a bit... 
I'm mean, like I'm a bit sad that they how they made it. Last year I think there were more Sunnymoon OU slots. This time there's only two. But it's also kind of fine, so I don't have to record that many games. I mean I still record a lot of games. But the, these lower tier games, the UU, RU, NU, um, my man UB brings them to you most of the time. And I usually just record my screen because I don't know enough about those tiers. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Okay, we let me let me just hit the one hour mark. If I'm already still here, I'm gonna hit the one hour mark real quick. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.